We just want to welcome you again to our episode of our Barita Brain Trust Bites. We have here with us Bob Russell. He's the portfolio manager for Global Fixed Income. And we want to talk to you a bit about just the fixed income market in general, Bob. Mm. You, you know, one of the things I realize, everybody talking about equities, but like 15 years ago, fixed income was like the place to be in Jamaica, wouldn't you say? Because what were rates running by that time? Well, generally, 15 years ago, interest rates were much higher. Um, generally, I kind of give you like an example. Respect to a car loan, my uh, car loan would probably run about 15, 17%. Mm. Um, no, you can't get a car loan like, you know, 7, um, 8%. Right. Um, and you can get a longer time to pay that off as well. So, yeah, um, fixed income. I mean, if you are an investor or you were um, able to lend uh, money um, to buy a car, right. your average return would have been about 15%. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. So, I mean, that's, that's a place where you could significantly make money when our interest rates have fallen significantly. I mean, is that a good thing, Bob? Well, um, it's a good... It's a good thing if you're you're on the side where you're um, a botnet borrower of funds, okay. um, because interest rates basically is is really the price of money. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are borrowing um, borrowing and you're borrowing at a lower rate, that means that your price is low. And right. you know, in general, you know, everybody wants to pay you know less for things. So, That's right. um, so if you are borrowing and you're in it even for consumption or even from a um, a productive standpoint um it's a good thing mm -hmm. but if you are an investor yeah. um it 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 becomes challenging because that way you you have to be a little bit more selective in what you invest in and who you lend money to mm -hmm. and um you know what kind of securities um you allocate funds to that's right. I mean, so uh, as, as some of you may know, at Barita, we have a suite of managed portfolios. And some of that includes fixed income on the J dollar and the US dollar side. So, Bob, what would you be saying just to investors as far as where are the opportunities then in a fixed income market where interest rates are low? Where are the opportunities? Well, currently, um, and especially locally, too, uh, they... The opportunities are in um, corporate mm -hmm. okay. um, paper. Um, you find that with interest rates coming down, um, institutions are looking for creative ways of, of raising money. And a lot of institutions, a lot of big institutions are issuing corporate debt. Right. Um, with the government um, deleveraging, you see they're going from it was their debt to GDP ratio was what 140, it's mm -hmm. now down below, below 100. 100. Um, the government isn't borrowing as much, so as a consequence, interest rates on that side and interest rates overall has have come down, as I pointed out earlier. Mm -hmm. So you have to take a little bit more risk mm -hmm. in terms of looking at organizations who used to borrow from the banks mm -hmm. but are now borrowing from the general public right, right. Um, through through various issues and in general these these interest rates are like between like between seven and eight percent for a low loan term of say six to seven years okay okay yeah. so again then what type of client would be benefiting and we would probably say you know what fixed income investment this is probably best suited for you who who would you say that would be um fixed income investments um is not for any particular um class of mm -hmm. client i mean mm -hmm. it's it's really for any everybody i mean currently um the stock market is doing well and right. that generally happens when an economy is um, growing and it's improving. Um, you know, you find that the stock market does well, but there are times when, um, you know, they could have like a market downturn. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the economy moves in cycles. That's right. So 
fixed income is a way of sort of managing your risk because ah. it's a more of a sort of a steady return. That's yes, right. there are some risks associated with it. But in general and traditionally, it has been a sort of a steady mover mm -hmm. and a give, give me a steady return um, over a long period of time. That's very key, Bob, because really what you're saying is not that, okay, where the fixed income is for me. Really, you want to be thinking about, okay, how much fixed income should I be having in my portfolio? And maybe that can change over time. And that's really the benefit of even a, a investment advisor being able to say to you, all right, this probably needs to be the sort of mix you need depending exactly. on your goals. Exactly. I mean... Uh, a couple of years ago, I was um, fortunate enough to to um, be in a position where I could put a a down a down payment on 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 a house, mm. and um, you know the the market was was beginning to improve. But mm. at the same point in time, I know I have this big outlay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is the risk that the market can can um, decline. So. Rather than take the risk and put all of your funds in in the stock market, um, you know, I had most of my funds in in fixed income just right. to preserve that that purchasing power because I'm not going to have this outlay. But uh, at the same point in time, you don't want to miss out on the on the bull run, right. so you allocate some amount of funds towards it. Now, you know, at the beginning of that journey. Um, to, to the house ownership, um, you know, I could take a little bit more risk, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, living with my father, so I can, you know, allocate all of my funds towards investing in stock. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. it turns, you know, I know that him have my back. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, as you, as generally as you as you come to like a big. Um, what you call it, payout, or, yeah. or even if you as you approach retirement. Right. You know, generally you try to allocate most of your funds towards a fixed, fixed income because it's steadier. Um, there's less risk of a downturn. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it, it, I mean, yes, you should still have some allocation towards stock. Um, but it's just, as you said before, you know, the amount of allocation towards one risky asset, which is the stock market, um, to a less risky asset, which is the fixed exactly. income market, um, should change. Right. Yeah. And even just just to highlight, probably one of our funds, we we have our FX bond fund. I know it's been doing significantly well in just in this low interest rate market because I believe where where we right now with our U.S. dollar bond fund, for example. Um, our U.S. dollar bond fund is one of the top performing. Um, funds in the market right now, I mm -hmm. believe it's either number two or three, mm -hmm. and it's the differences are are very small. Um, one of the things that that we did um, initially is we invested a lot in in the GOJ bonds, and the GOJ bonds performance did did very well for us. Um, right. When we started out on this IMF program. Um, a lot of the GOJ bonds were trading below par. Mm -hmm. um, recently, he, the 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 government was back in the market buying back some of those bonds, and they were buying that those back at twenty percent wow. above wow. above above par. So those um, sort of those sort of um, events, you know, helped the performance of the fund. That's and right. You know, we were able to benefit from it, yes. and um, as a result, and we we sold some of those bonds back mm -hmm. to the government, and right. we were able to realize that return. Wow! And um, I know we're looking to deploy um, that money into other bonds where we see the you know, the future performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and so I just want to really remind clients, this is really why you want to benefit from the brain trust. Because in a fund, for example, you who may be a small investor, you can benefit from these sort of moves. You might not be able to afford to buy an outright bond, but when you're in a bond fund, you mm -hmm. can benefit from the returns that come from there and benefit from the insights from people like Bob Russell as they look at the opportunities and capitalize on them. That's correct.